David, uh, you told me you've been doing martial arts for about how many years? I started at four years old when uh, by Taekwondo when I was four years old. And when you started fighting in competition? In competition when I was a kid already in Taekwondo in a junior and uh, already uh, amateur fight like a 16, 17 years old. Okay, and you were talking to me the other day though about your first, the early days of MMA. That's what I want to ask you about, the early days of MMA. Uh, what time, what year maybe did you start fighting MMA? Well, the beginning, what, uh, it was maybe the USC number two or three, just the beginning and we just can't, can't have some video in France, you know, by some dark way and when I see that I say, oh, shit, that is the thing I want. I want to try myself against someone who maybe practice out of the sport than mine and see if my sport is the best and see if my strong is the best. So I started uh, thinking about training uh, that kind of sport. And so I go many gym training different martial arts like pancras, full contact, kickboxing, jiu jitsu. And I start go to all gym, all places where the people are famous. In the early days, you had to go to more than one gym to train your sports, right? You did wrestling at one place. You did what? What was the combination you put together for yourself? I mean, for for myself, I think Thai boxing for long distance. A regular boxing, close distance with a wrestling, and then Jiu Jitsu on the ground. But at that time, did you already have Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu in France? Uh, Muay Thai. We have Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu not much. Uh -huh. uh, so I start Muay Thai and Pancras. You had Pancras in France? Yes, we had. Wow, that's cool. Okay, for the folks at home, that's uh, Kenny Shamrock and Frank Shamrock. They were the kings of Pancras many years ago, and they were big in the early UFCs. Uh, now, we were talking yesterday, you said the difference between the young kids starting in MMA today, what's different? Because now the young kids, when they want to start the MMA, they really depend on something where we practice. And this means you just find a gym where in the same place they can train Thai boxing, boxing, wrestling, Jiu Jitsu in the same place. It was hardest for us before to train, because we have to travel a lot, spend money, and try to find a good gym. Also, I know, because uh, uh, that's also, I, I had taken about a uh, six or eight year layoff and I started fighting again because of the, watching the UFC videos at that time. And I know one problem was you're training, uh, kicking at this gym, punching at that gym, but when you went to competition, that was the only time you put everything together. You see the love between border? <laughs> <laughs> French families are very close. Yeah, it was hard because we, we don't have the habit to put it all together. You know, so at the beginning we train everywhere and uh, create a, a group, a group of friends. It was friend. the first MMA gym in France, in the south of France. Then I open it and I allow every people who want to practice MMA to come and share his own knowledge. And then we, we, we put all our strength and our technique together and we train uh, in the MMA rules. And then, uh, wh where did you fight? At, um, let's say you started fighting in France, and then did you go to other countries? Did you ever fight in the big, big competition? Uh, yeah, I fight in TKO and some competition like this, uh, also in Japan, like uh, Dreams and some stuff like that. Rings? Yeah, at the beginning of Dream. It's a Japanese competition. Just before the Dream, they have this one, and they change the name and they make a Dreams one Pride. Oh, and then now it's called, called Dreams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I fight in England and Pride in Glory and some events like this. And then you were in Thailand for like yeah. five years? Th Thailand, I stayed pretty long and I fight uh, pretty much in Thailand. What do you think about people who want to make uh, uh, MMA or K1, they want to make that their career? What do you think? It's very hard. It's very hard because you have to, to reach fast, a uh, high level to get enough post money and sponsor. Because at the beginning you don't find any sponsor. And so you need, you need to put all your money to train and, uh, and go fight. Yeah, in Thailand, the average fight's going to get you something like uh, 7,000 baht, 5,000 baht. Hey, Pick, how much do you weigh? 75. 75 kilos. And you're fighting professionally? No. No. You're going to? I hope. <laughs> if I'm good enough, I win. <laughs> David, anything you want to say? I love that fucking sport, man. <laughs> I love it. What do you like better, MMA, grappling? MMA. Stri MMA. Because I can express myself as I want, as there is a less rules. So I can use all what I learned since uh, I practice martial arts. So I do love MMA.
<laughs> about $150 to $200. And the gyms now, they charge you to train there, so your training fees might be more than what you earn fighting. Yeah. Often when I, when I went to Thailand, uh, the, the, the post money I, I win just pay my ticket. Plane. So often I go by bus, three days from Saigon, and I'm coming back by plane. <laughs> So I have to win. I don't want to wait by on bus three days. It's too long. If you don't win, you can't get home. Yeah, that, that, that's that's give me a hard motivation. All right, man. David, were you in the military? Yes, I was. Uh, I served five years in the French Foreign Legion. Wh where? France and uh, South America, Africa, ex Yugoslavia. Did you go through the, the jungle training in uh, French yeah, Guiana? Yes, I'm jungle expert. That's my business. Uh. That's French Guiana, yes, right? Yes, in the 3rd Regiment in uh, French Guiana. Wow. Where, That's where why I organize trekking in the jungle and I work with the National Park to, to teach the park rangers how to survive in, uh, in the jungle. Wow. Do, uh, were you in combat? Well, combat in, in combat war? I was uh, in ex Yugoslavia in 1995, and also in Chad in 1996. After some in the country. Wow. Okay, thanks, David. David, I appreciate everything you've done for me the last few days. And uh, thanks for the training. I love your gym a lot. And uh, do you just want to give some final advice to people in America or in Europe, around the world? Yeah. When you train hard, you train hard to choose your place on the food chain. So you want to be the lion or you want to be the gazelle? <laughs> hard words from a hard man. <laughs> Hey, I'm Antonio Griselle from Martial Arts Odyssey. Today we are in Saigon, that's Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. We're learning MMA. I'm here with Mr. David Minetti. And although he has an Italian name, he's half Italian. He's got the good half. <laughs> David, I want to thank you so much for teaching me today. You're welcome. You can come back anytime you want. It was nice to see you there. Thank you so much. Can, can you just give me an idea of roughly, let's say somebody, a fighter wants to come from another country, about how much money it's going to cost them for a month of training. So, we, so you got a fighter idea. house, you can do the visa yeah. for them. Yeah, we can, we can, we can make that. 200 euro, yeah. that's it. That's yeah, for the training and then the house is 5 euro per so you're looking at $375. It's actually a lot cheaper than training in Thailand. And you're going to get the complete package here. And I'm telling you straight up, uh, he's got the conditioning. He's got a full conditioning program in here. they got the MMA, they got the boxing, and they got the Muay Thai. This is solid, solid, solid place to train. So if you're sick of going to Thailand, and if you want to learn real fighting, you want to learn MMA, come out here with David Minetti. And it's cheap. <laughs> anyway, I'm Antonio Griselle. That's it for Martial Arts Odyssey. As always, at the end of every episode of Martial Arts Odyssey, I tell you, get in the gym, do your sets, do your reps, do your road work, and please say a prayer for the people of Burma.